All right, everybody, it's time for another edition of Boy Green Daily. And uh, we lost Justin Hardy. Uh, he left the New York Jets to jump over to the Cleveland Browns. What does it all mean? Can the Jets special teams unit stay elite? We'll dive into all that here on the show. Let's roll. And it is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Yates. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is joining the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gastard Sycamore, baby. For me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I've, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gosh darn bananas. Hey, what's up, everybody? Paul Esden Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to Boy Green Daily, a daily New York Jets video show also available wherever you get your podcasts. And uh, welcome to the program. We're streaming live on Heavy on Jets Facebook page, my YouTube channel, and my Twitter account as well. Make sure you guys show your support wherever you're watching on the program. And uh, shout out to everybody. I see a few members of the Boy Green Super Fan Club in here, which is our YouTube membership group. Uh, Jared B. Zoinks. Yep, he's in here as well. Also, uh, 19 New York Jet 69 says, what's up, Boy Green? Finally made it to one of your live shows. And yes, we're live every single day at 730 Welcome to the party, baby. But you guys can also, if you can't get up this early or you have work or whatever, you guys can always watch this after the fact or, like I said, on the audio-only version of the podcast, if you prefer. And a bit of a Debbie Downer yesterday. Justin Hardy uh, left the Jets and signed a deal with the Cleveland Browns, our former pro bowler. Now, I, I will just say this. It's not a devastating blow like, oh, boy, how are the Jets going to recover from this? That's not what this is about for me. I, uh, you know, uh, he's a former, you know, a team captain, a former pro bowler. And I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about um, CJ Mosley and the fact that the Jets were going to have to do something with their contract. And ultimately they did. They gave him an extension. But when we talked about Mosley, I said, boy, I really hope he gets to be a part of the turnaround because Mosley's been here since 2019. And that was the beginning of the Adam Gase run. And things couldn't have been much worse, obviously, five years ago when all that transpired. Um, so for Mosley to be with us through the slump of nonsense, and then now it looks like we're going to be pretty good this year. Um, you know, I wanted Mosley to be a part of that because he earned it. He deserved it. He went through the slog with the rest of us, and he has been a, a straw that stirs the drink, a team leader, a guy that's rallied this unit. And uh, so I really wanted him to be a part of this next journey. Now, if I had to pick a next guy in the line, like CJ Moses, number one, he he is most deserving to be here of any of the guys on the team and deserves to be a part of this group. But if I had to pick someone below that level, Justin Hardy would be pretty close because this guy uh, comes over to the Jets and it's an unheralded position. You know, a gunner and special teams ace, as uh, the headline reads, doesn't normally draw a lot of eyes or draw a lot of headlines or things of that nature. And I saw some stuff on the heavy on jets page of people going, who cares? Throw Hardy out. And I'm like, come on, man, we don't have to disrespect the guy and he's going home. So, uh, you know, I totally understand from his perspective why he did it. Plus, if we look at the recent tweets from Justin Hardy, it seemed like the jets were going in a different direction. Anyway, I'll see if the tweets are still up here from Justin Hardy, but long story short, uh, it wasn't looking good. And uh, Justin Hardy, by the way, after uh, the signing became officially tweeted out all out trying to bring my city a Super Bowl, which is something he said to uh, Joe Flacco a while back. And uh, let me see. Let me see if I can see some of the comments. Uh, if Hardy still had them up there, uh, he might have he might have deleted them. It looks like he may have uh, deleted some of those tweets. But anywho, yeah, I'm peeking around. It does not look like those tweets are still up. But he had a few tweets up that seemed to indicate that perhaps the Jets told them it may not be happening uh, for him. Oh, here's a few of them. Around this time, everybody forgets how special teams win and loses game until it's too late. But we're going to see. 
And uh, there was another tweet, but it looked like uh, it's not there. The way I play speaks for itself, SMH. And he had a couple other tweets where it seemed like, oh boy, it sounds like uh, perhaps the conversations between parties were not going very well, which is a shame. We had Thomas Morstead on the show a couple weeks ago after he got his extension. And I asked him, Thomas Morstead, if you kind of could put on the GM cap and you could add one player to this team coming up this season, like who would it be? And I thought maybe he would say, you know, some free agent or somebody he had a relationship with or something. But the number one thing he said, the number one player was Justin Hardy is someone he wanted back. And obviously that's not happening. And here's the thing. I think uh, this was a move that we kind of saw coming to be honest. So everyone brings up Irv Charles, the, uh, the wide receiver who uh, had the big fumble uh, special teams recovery against the Broncos. So he had some great splash plays on the good side. He also had some uh, poor splash plays on some of the coverage plays. I'm pretty sure uh, people said he was responsible for that Chargers punt return touchdown at the beginning of the game. So uh, there was good and bad. Um, So I really wanted, going back to the front of this, I really wanted the whole special teams unit to run it back. Zerline, who comes back, Morstead comes back, and Hardy, if he would have come back, it would have been awesome to run it all back, but you can't bring back everybody. Excuse me, and you have to make business decisions, and the Jets did. So Irv Charles steps up to the plate, and another guy, I don't think I've seen a lot of people talking about him uh, on social media, Isaiah Oliver, who was really the first move the Jets made. He was uh, cut from the San Francisco 49ers, and the Jets signed him before free agency technically started. He's going to be a backup slot to Michael Carter II, but also an avid special teamer. Let me double-check those special team stats. I know I saw that. Um, I know I think I saw that when he first came over. I wanted to double-check because that could have been a Justin Hardy replacement. Let me double-check the special team snaps. Oh, yeah, here it is. Um, He played in uh, 39% of the special team snaps last year. He was more so on defense. He appeared in all 17 games, regular season games for the 49ers and made six starts. So he wasn't predominantly a special teams player, but uh, he certainly has a lot of uh, snap percentages over the last, uh, let's call it, four years. He's played in at least 25% of the special team snaps, and he played in a career high in special team snaps this past season with 39%. So maybe he's another factor uh, in the special teams conversation for the Jets. Plus, let's just be honest, in general, special teams is changing. Uh, Obviously, with the new kickoff rule, we're having an XFL-style situation where you're kind of having lines of scrimmages of return team versus kicking team and and a stagnant space plus kicker returner and and kicking zones and landing zones and this and that, which will be a little jarring to see at the beginning of the season. Uh, But it's a new world out there, so we'll have to see how the New York Jets adjust. Brant Boyer has proven to be one of the best in the game, so if anyone can do it, it'll be Brant Boyer who's been a remarkable special teamer. So I wish Justin Hardy the best. A salute to you, sir. Uh, I I never had him on the show, but uh, exchanged tweets every once in a while on Twitter. He was uh, highly respected by his teammates, well thought of from everyone I've ever talked to. I haven't heard anyone say a bad word about Justin Hardy. But if you look at last year, he has the injury, goes on IR, misses a large chunk of the middle of the season. And uh, I'll bring up this example. I'll bring up this example. Um, when I used to be, uh, I had a job once. I won't even say what the job was. I had a job once and I thought it was pretty cool. And it was non, non-specific non sports related. It wasn't a radio job or anything. But I had a job and I did it. And the job was going fine. And then randomly in the middle of the job, I had to take like, you know, a, a, a multi-week absence. I had to leave for some reason and go do something else. And then eventually return back to the job. And... When I came back to the job, um, the company realized when I was gone that they can operate without me. And so things are going great at the job. Then I leave for some reason. And then I come back and they're like, yeah, we can we can do it without you. And ultimately, I was let go from that job. So in this case, although, like I said, there was a couple of things like the Chargers game and things of that nature, like, oh, boy, Hardy would have been pretty good there for the most part. You remove that piece from the puzzle You say, hey, the special teams unit is still pretty elite. You know what? I think we're fine. We could save some shekels there. And that's what happened. So try to compare my story, perhaps, to the story of a special teamer. I guess that all brings it home. So it was a premeditated attack here. It seems like the Jets had other plans to spend their uh, money 
Again, I don't think this is devastating. All of a sudden, their Super Bowl window is over. I'm not saying anything crazy like that. But a deserving send-off for Justin Hardy, uh, who was a really great guy. And obviously, he reached the Pro Bowl, which is one of his goals when he came here to the Jets in the first place. So uh, I'll be rooting for Hardy uh, outside of when the Jets play the Browns, of course. So uh, shout-out to uh, Justin Hardy and uh, what he brought to the team. Really like Justin Hardy. All right, let's get to some of your comments here on the show. All right, we got Gator McCluskey in here. We've got my mother in here. We got a little bit of everybody in here and a bunch of the members of the Boy Green Super Fan Club. Again, that option is available. Whoever is watching on YouTube, feel free for a small fee every month. Feel free to join. Um, let's go to Phil. Uh, I'm wondering if the loss of Hardy was planned because they don't think needed a new kickoff rules. Just a thought. Well, I don't think that could be true. Now, here's the other reason why I don't think that's true. The kickoff rules just passed like a week ago or something, even less than a week ago. So for that decision to have been made, then I don't think makes sense because the Hardy tweets of like some sort of disrespect in the negotiation room happened well before that. And we didn't even know the kickoff rules were going to pass. The NFL made a late change and flipped votes, according to NFL insiders. They said that the NFL really wanted to make this change. And if they would have voted on it like two weeks ago, it wouldn't have passed. But then they kind of rallied the votes to get it. So, no, I, I don't believe that's it. That's a good theory, Phil. But, no, I don't believe that's it. Uh, John Hepburn, 17 game season is affecting the game. We need more players on the roster. Another bye week. Another thing I would throw out there that still, I, I don't quite understand, but it's another thing is what, why active players to non-active players. So for people who don't know, there's 53 players on a roster, but there's a game day 45. So like eight players are inactive. They're on the team, but they're not active to play in the game with to your point, John, with the schedule increasing, you would think that they could increase that so there's no active, non-active. You have 53? You have 53. Perhaps expand it to the practice squad. Your practice squad are eligible players to play in the games. Now, I understand maybe why that one can't happen because there's a difference between an NFL game check and a practice squad check, so maybe that's a reason why they can, and that would have to expand some of the stuff for the salary, but I think you should expand the roster. Another bye week is fine if you want to kind of work that way in there. Uh, I, to be honest, I think we will anyway because the NFL will be expanded to 18 games sooner rather than later. That's an inevitability I see, and that could result in some of the things that you're asking for. So, yeah, more players, more opportunities, more development. I, I'm for all of that. Uh, Phil, uh, cause Greg, the leg kicks it out of the end zone most of the time. Yeah. And by the way, uh, kickers will be punished now if you kick it through the back of the end zone. So I believe it goes out to, if I heard the rules correctly, uh, if you kick it through the back of the end zone, the team goes to the 30 yard line. Uh, so if it goes to 30, you're like hurting your team. So Zerline will be and any kicker in the league will be incentivized to kick it short of the goal line and the and the returners can't call a fair catch. So it's like a whole combination of action of all these pieces that are supposed to uh, increase more um, returns, encourage more returns, and also play this kind of chess game between kicker and punter. So while Greg the leg has this massive leg, I think the Jets will be telling him, hey, don't boot it to the back of the end zone. Like put it like right at the five or maybe the 10 and encourage the guy to come out because you don't want the other team to get it at the 30. But, you know, like I said, there's a lot of new rules and things to figure out here. Uh, Avatar says the loss of Hardy should mean the return of Ashton. I don't know if it's a direct correlation, but both guys were pretty key special teamers. More so Ashton, uh, I think, with – well, no, both were – no, no, both were special. I, I don't want to try to denigrate one or the other. Uh, no, uh, I think uh, both are important. I'd love Ashton back. Uh, I guess, again, I would have an interview with Ashton if he returns, so I'd love to talk to Ashton for the first time on the show. I've been a longtime Ashton Davis fan, and uh, maybe it's just going to take time of because, like, the safety market's kind of stagnant right now. you got Justin Simmons. you got uh, Jamal Adams still out there. you got a uh, – uh, Quandre Diggs out there. Like you get a lot of guys. So uh, maybe ultimately the Jets will benefit and Ashton returns and that kind of uh, rounds out your safety room. Plus they may draft a rookie too. Um, Peter Campisi here says, it, or if you watch a USFL, you know what a cluster F this is going to be. Special teams are going to be even more important. They absolutely are, which could have been the opposite of the Hardy thing. Like, oh boy, we got to bring them in because of how important this is. But obviously they decided against that. 
Um, yes. Yeah. To Jared B's point, uh, yeah, there's a landing zone and a kicking zone and players can't move until the ball lands in the landing zone or, or touches a player and then action can happen. So it's more, it's going to be more North South returns instead of East West. Like I heard someone describe about Devin Hester, you know, he'd kind of climb the pocket of going East West and then whoop, and then kind of cut up and uh, do some of that action. Uh, yeah, it's going to be more north south trying to break through the initial line, and then it's one on one mano e mano kicker returner. We know who's going to win that battle, so uh, that's for sure. Yeah, punt stayed the same. This is just a kickoff rule. This is just a kickoff rule. There basically, well, I guess if you want to bring up the word punt, the kickoffs now kind of become punts in a way. It it is puntish from that standpoint. Yeah, but punts itself are the same. It's kickoffs. La Via, hit that like button for Boy Green. Damn right, everybody. We got uh, 300 plus people in here. Make sure you guys are hitting that like button. Also, hit subscribe. Help expand the channel, baby. Uh, Mike Westoff might have a field day scheme. He's on the Saints now, I think. Oh, he is? Oh, I'll have to double check. The last I knew he was on the Broncos. Let me Google that real quick to see. I got to get uh, old uh, Westoff on the show. I've never had him on, but I've I've been very deep in his book. Yeah, he's still on the Broncos. He's an assistant head coach for the Broncos right now, it looks like. So uh, he is still on the Broncos. As the assistant head coach, he also helps out with special teams. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure he's going to have a field day. And so is Brand Boyer. These guys are mad scientists going to be figuring out the trickery involved because I think there, there's some things they can exploit. Um, let's see. Uh Let's see. Yeah, this one this one hurts a little. There's no question about it, but let's see how they recover from it. Um, yes, he is on Denver. He's on Denver's roster, that of Mike Westhoff. Uh, 19, uh, New York Jets, 69. With the new kickoff rules, we should see a lot more returns. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, and more, I think, return touchdowns because of this line. Again, it is uh, the easiest way to explain it is that cover zero-like mentality where you could get a big touchdown off it. So, again, we may have too many return touchdowns, uh, which means uh, the Jets should get creative. We'll see if X is going to be the return man. Do they get creative with some of the other more prominent players on the team to take advantage of the rules? Oh, yeah. Maybe add another guy. Maybe another wide receiver they add in the future has that return ability as well. Uh, Johnny says on YouTube, we need Sonny Weaver Jr., Mac, no matter what. Yeah, I can't wait. I will watch draft day. We are in the month of the draft. So, uh, yes, we will be doing uh, draft day stuff, and I will be making draft day references. Oh, yeah, that'll be coming. Best draft movie. Love it. One of the best sports movies. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Christopher Cancel says, uh, the kickoff rule is pathetic. I like how it used to be. Yeah, well, the NFL just changes. Uh, it's all about the health and safety of the game is what they say. So um, as a former guy who made his bones as a running back and a return man, um, uh, you know, I'm glad that they're do they're they're attempting to keep it in the game because the other way, Christopher, is they just remove it from the game, and you don't want that. I, I, or I don't want to speak for you. I don't want that. I think it's a key part of the game. Devin Hester is the first like pure straight up return man who wasn't. He was a wide receiver, but he really wasn't. That made the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and he would have been the last one if the kickoff died. So I'm glad that they're doing everything in their power to keep it. We'll see. They're going to keep tinkering with it, so we'll see. Um, Frank on Facebook, and you have to announce onside kicks. Doesn't that defeat the purpose of deception? Yes, uh, that's another rule we could talk about for those who don't know. Because obviously, with the new kickoff rule, if you had an onside kick where everyone's lined up at the 40 and 35, that uh, on the opposite ends of the field, that an onside kick, the kicker would just recover his own onside kick. So that no longer works. So, yes, if a a team is going to do an onside kick. There's no more Thomas Morstead surprise attack. You have to announce it that, hey, we're running an onside kick. So that's a horrible uh, side effect of this rule that no matter how cool this kickoff rule is or isn't, the worst part is that onside kick surprises are now gone. So you have to announce the fact that you're doing an onside kick, uh, which stinks. Because that Morstead, Sean Payton Super Bowl play was so ballsy and awesome. And I know the the uh, you know re return rate, receive rate, the success rate. That's what I'm looking for. The, re the success rate isn't great on these onside kicks. So 
uh, you know, they're trying to do something with that too. But yeah, I, I prefer the deception. So now that everyone knows it's coming when they come, maybe that will be another twist in the game of uh, something they can come up with. But yeah, on the surface, that part really stinks. Phil says, unfortunately, when football uh, is, uh, turns to two-hand touch, I may stop watching. Come on, Phil. I'm a diehard football fan. It will never turn into two-hand touch, but I understand the people that are reacting to the rules as they are. Um, okay. Bubble wrap coming soon. Oh, boy. Not everyone is a fan of these. When are we getting the new jerseys? Great question. I'm checking the Jet social media every day, and, I, and I'm dead serious, so... You know, I want the Jets to release these as soon as possible because personally, again, this is a tradition for me. Uh, the New York Jets, um, or excuse me, my birthday is April 26th. And obviously that doesn't change on a year to year basis. So my birthday is April 26th. This year, that's day two of the NFL draft. And for my birthday, I love celebrating it around the draft. Like I'm just it's not like I'm throwing a party and the draft's going on. Like I just want people to leave me alone so I can enjoy the draft. That's kind of my birthday every year. But the one thing my dad gets me every year, and he's gotten it for a, a billion years in a row is that, um, you know, he gets me the draft hat every year and then like a jet draft shirt or jet draft hoodie or something. And uh, I'm wearing the gear that the prospects are wearing as the picks are happening. So it has to happen at minimum by the draft because that's the when the jets announce a 10th overall pick that person's going to be wearing the brand spanking new jets draft gear so it's going to be announced at minimum draft day but again like the lions they are announcing theirs on april 18th i imagine the nfl probably doesn't want them announcing on the same day they probably want to spread it out to take over the news cycle so it probably won't be april 18th it'll probably have to be before or after again i'm just hoping before because that gives fans more time to get the gear before the draft and we're celebrating the draft. So why drag our feet? What's the difference between April 3rd today and April 20th? You know what I mean? So uh, I don't know. The New Jersey's new hats, which, by the way, the the uh, draft hats are all released for 30 of the 32 NFL teams. The only two teams it's not are the Texans who have a rebrand and the Jets who have a rebrand. So uh, I'd, like, I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. So uh, Jets jerseys, hopefully you're coming out sooner rather than later. I DM the Jets. They did not return. I slid into the, into the DMs, and uh, they did not respond. The New York Jets official account when I asked them about the New Jerseys. So really disappointed. Um, yes, when you announce the onside kick, it goes back to the old alignment. I, I might have not made that very clear. Yeah, it goes back to the original alignment, and you do an onside kick. You announce it. Everyone knows it's coming. It is original alignment for onside kicks. That is correct. Um. Yeah, there could have been other rules. Why would anyone be a fan of these lame rules? I mean, you could be a fan or not be a fan. The rules are the rules. I, I guess that's my point, as uh, some people are are saying that Christopher Cancel, you know, the rules are the rules. I mean, we can all hate them and just like, you know, the old man on the porch, ah, stupid rules. But like, you know, if we can't change them, we just have to accept them. Uh, but some of the rules are like a one year thing. And then let's see, which I believe the kickoff rule isn't a permanent thing. I believe that's a one year thing. Let's see what happens. Um, and then it could be a permanent change or whatever. We'll see. Um, oh, boy, I will tell you, Johnny asked, like, are we going to hear with the 10 pick the Jet select Paul Boy Green Eston Jr.? I will tell you this. I would love on my bucket list is announcing a pick at the draft for the Jets. Like a first round pick would be really cool, but any pick, oof, that'd be awesome. That'd be a bucket list item. I love the draft. So to be able to do that would be bucket list item. So we'll see. We'll see. That would be really cool. Uh, Jared B says the Jets are losing money by not releasing the draft gear. Yes, sooner rather than later is basically my point. The sooner you can, uh, the bake, uh, the better, I think. Now, here's the thing I don't know. In 19, New York Jets 69 says, so can we fake the inside kick? I'm curious because they say, and maybe this will be part of the rules and the and the gamesmanship, you have to announce that you're doing an onside kick. Can you announce to do an onside kick and then just not do it? Like all of a sudden you pooch it? Because sometimes, right, in the normal old rules, if you're going to, like, it seems like an obvious onside kick situation, right, 
and there was no announcing before, you lined up in onside kick recovery, and then the team went, ha, 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 we're actually just going to pooch it over top. Boop! And just go, and then just kind of pooch it over top. And they're like, oh, oh, geez. Um, you know, like, oh, wow, that's weird. So I wonder if they will allow you to do that. Probably not, because that would break the rules and everyone would start doing that. But um, I'm curious for the loopholes in the rule. Yeah, yeah, we could get basketball looking scores. That'd be that'd be fun. <laughs> Big Highlander fan. I am the old man on the porch. I respect it. I respect it. FPP says I can announce the eighth round pick. You know what, FPP? I will do that this year. I will announce an eighth round pick. I know the j- the draft is only seven rounds, but I will announce an eighth round pick. We'll turn that into a social media event. I will do that. Uh Frank asks, how much money do we need to raise to make your bucket list come true? Yeah, there was the ferret fund the other day. That's a good point. That's a good point. So maybe random YouTube super chats all of a sudden inspires the New York Jets. I don't think so, but maybe. Maybe that is uh, what we need. Maybe that gets us there. (laughs) You people are crazy. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, Jackson Valente, who's a uh, a frequenter on these airwaves. Brant Boyer deserves his flowers. Longest tenured Jet player coach, and we're lucky. Again, I think it's the most impressive. I don't know if I have a better word to describe it. It is the most shocking, impressive, cool thing that Brant Boyer has survived all these different regimes for coaches to be fired and then a new coach comes in yet goes yeah let's keep that brant boyer guy and then again and again and again let me see what is brant boyer up to now let's pull up brant boyer i mean it's multiple regimes it's at least three i think it might be more let me see uh brant boyer how long has he been with the jets let's see let's pull it up so he's been with the jets since 2016 so that's todd bowles adam gase robert sala and I, maybe I'm missing one. No, no, no. 2016. So Todd Bowles, Adam Gase, Robert. John. So yeah. So three different coaches, right? So is there a Bowles? And then Gase's like, yeah, we could keep him. And so I was like, yeah, we could keep him. Like, it's just crazy, crazy impressive. You have to be pretty damn good at your job for people who like, by nature, when you go into a new business and you're the boss, you want to bring in your own people, people you trust, people you know. Especially in the NFL. The NFL is a brotherhood, man. It's a relationships business. I know Johnny who knows Fred and Fred knows Johnny. And that's my that's my thing. So to hire or retain somebody um, like that is uh, wicked impressive. That speaks, I think, to Brent Boyer's uh, resume. And obviously, uh, you know, what is he, you know, the fact that he's that impressive. So. Uh, yeah. Johnny says, how would I say the pick? Do you got to practice it like screaming Jets chant or are you being super suave? Well, I'll tell you this. I I learned a lesson in radio a long time ago that you don't just want to write out what you're going to say on a script and then just like practice it a million times and be robotic. So you don't want to do that. Early in my radio career, I used to write out everything I was going to say because I thought that was what preparation, what people were talking about. Like, ooh, I'm going to say all these awesome things. There's stats. There's funny jokes in here. There's all these things. And then I noticed in the middle of it on my first radio show back in college, I was like, holy crap, it sounds like I'm a librarian. I'm reading my own words. And you can tell if you're hearing someone like if you're listening just to the audio version of this or whatever, that the words that are coming out of my mouth right now are just flying. I'm not thinking about the words that are coming out of my mouth. They're just flying out. Hopefully there's a filter in there. If anything really dumb enters, it's like, oh, you probably shouldn't say that. Like, But besides that, though, the words are coming out. I'm not reading a script. There's no script in front of me. The words are just coming out of my mouth. And uh, it, you can tell the difference when words are coming out like they are right now or if I'm going. Pass rusher first round, Brock Bowers trade down. Like I'm reading random notes that are on my notebook over here. Like you could tell the difference. It's subtle, but you could tell the difference when someone's reading something. So you don't want to, you don't want to have something scripted. Now I'm not saying you don't prepare or have something fun, like go out there unprepared. Now I probably wouldn't copy, you know, the Drew Pearsons of the world or Pat McAfee's who have said, you know, the four time Dallas Cowboys, Super Bowl. Some of those were fun, but you don't want to repeat, you know, like lightning struck and it's over. Like, so you need your own shtick. 
So there'd be a lot of chutzpah. There's no question about it. There'd be a lot of energy. There'd be fire. I would be screaming into that microphone. And there would be a jet chant mixed in there. How could it not? And maybe the more I've thought about this, like that, like, you know, my genuine reaction, right? So I don't like for people don't know, it comes on a card. Like, I don't think it's folded like, you know, like an envelope, like, you know, the Emmys or something. You're like, open it, go, oh, wow, it's this guy. But it's written on there. But you have to say your piece and then you have to read it. And I'm pretty sure you read it in the back because I saw the Roku draft documentary for random people that were reading it. They were practicing the names backstage, like if it's a complicated name or something. So I will know back then uh, or back there, rather, of who the name is. So I won't have that surprise factor like on air. I like in front of the podium, I read it. But I hope I can keep some of that same, like, oh, my goodness, they're taking Marvin Harrison Jr. You know what I mean? I could be losing it because of that's, that's a guy I want. Yeah! Maybe some of that. So it would be raw energy, probably. I probably wouldn't be super suave, like, Harrison, Marvin Harrison, like some James Bond thing. I probably wouldn't do that. It would be screaming and uncontrollable energy, probably. That's probably what it would be. Um... Jason uh, Stallworth here on YouTube. Boy Green, we need a tight end wide receiver in the first round. What do you think? Uh, sure, sign me up. If it's Brock Bowers or any wide receiver, the only receiver, and, and it's not terrible, but it's kind of like, eh, if they reach for Brian Thomas Jr., because like the three I like, I like Adunze, I like Neighbors, and I like uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. If it's one of those three or Brock Bowers, I like that. But if you trade back and get Brian Thomas, okay. You trade back and get one of those second or third tier offense tackles, okay. Like, you know, we could get there. But if it's one of the big three receivers or Brock Bowers, I'm losing my bananas. That would be spectacular. Uh, Shadow Realms, those guys like Gibson could realistically have four plus return touchdowns. We'll see. I think Gibson had a false sense because his like first big return goes to the house and a game winner. And he's like, oh, wow, every return is going to be a touchdown. So it probably gave him a false sense of expectations, probably. Uh, but I'm really excited for X. He's a, he's a fun player. Great story. Uh, that's what Lawrence said. So aside from the week one game, he kind of like lost it a little bit. Yeah, the Buffalo fumble. So yeah, no, well, that was Izzy. Well, either way, whoever. Uh, they just, you know, he really has to kind of reset to a homo a homeostasis. Ricky New York says, all my important buck list items are already checked off. Well, good for you, Ricky. Good for you, pal. Uh, you know, I have a lot that aren't. Like uh, seeing the Jets win a Super Bowl there whether it's in person or just experiencing it is on my bucket list um let me see like what what is on my bucket list like and bucket list for those who are unaware are things you do before you die egypt going to egypt like cairo would be kind of cool all the pyramids and whatnot uh all that stuff used to really intrigue me you know uh like tut uh, and uh, all the egyptian stuff is really fascinating so going to egypt would be kind of cool um, but yeah, a lot of Jets oriented stuff, like announcing a Jets draft pick, seeing them win the Super Bowl, getting a Jets Super Bowl tattoo immediately after. Like, I've got a couple of those. Um, all right, let's go to 19 New York Jets 69. Well, here's a good question. With all the players entering the draft, with uh, why only seven rounds? Maybe they should add an eighth pick. Uh, and by the way, I mean, I don't know when they changed. Let me see. When did the NFL draft change? They used to have like a billion rounds. NFL draft rounds history. Let me see if we can find this live. The first draft had nine rounds, was increased. Oh, yeah, here you go. Here's the full Monty for this. Okay, let's read this. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe I won't be able to find it. Uh, okay. Well, it's a big thing. I only read a small piece of it, but it has the history from uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame. The first draft had nine rounds, was increased to 10 in 1937, expanded to 20 rounds in, in 1939, adding a twist to the procedure, and then it keeps going about how all the draft expanded. So they started off at nine, then they went to 10, then they went to 20, then they went to like a billion rounds, and then they've cut it all the way back to seven and then split it across day one, day two, day three. So... uh and the rosters only being 53 players, the practice squad being 16. Like, I think they've just kind of made the perfect balance. And when do you enact it? Because you have to do it so everyone's at the same advantage. So uh, that's another factor. But, hey, more rounds are better as far as I'm concerned. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, to bring up Miko Hardman again. I was surprised when Miko said, I will not return punts for that man, speaking of Boyer. Yeah, I, maybe I'm old school. I was raised in a military family. When, when a superior, in this case a coach, asked me to do something, I don't question it. I just do it. If the coach told me, Paul, like here, here's an example. A coach, I'm fine. <laughs> Okay. For those who don't know, I'm five foot three in a slanted hill. And right now I'm a lot heavier than I used to be. But in high school, I was like 130 pounds or something, 140 pounds. I was a super small guy. My coach, because of injury said, Paul, we want you at middle linebacker. Again, I was five foot two, five foot three, 130 pounds. Maybe I said, you got it, coach. I didn't question it. And I lined up at middle linebacker uh, for our defense. I made some plays. All of a sudden I was, I was kind of keying in on what the offense was doing. I was flying around. It was the smallest middle linebacker of all time. Was it probably best for a five foot two guy to be the middle linebacker? Probably not, but I did it because the coach said so my father military. He tells me to do something. I do it. I don't question it. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Go do it. I don't know. So to ever question a coach and told them, yeah, kick rocks, pal. I'm not doing it, especially at the NFL level in a week four game against your old team. Hey, something happened. We need you to do this. He's like, I didn't get enough heads up. You're an NFL player getting paid millions of dollars. What do you mean you didn't get enough of heads up? So, yeah, so I lost a lot of respect for Miko Hardman with all that, all that crap. That's uh, that does not vibe with me. So uh, good riddance. See you later. Still a free agent. We'll see if he ever signs with anybody. The NFL, or excuse me, the Jets never pursued the the tampering charges, so they're just letting it go, and they just want it to die. And I feel the same way. See you, pal. NY Jets FL says uh, Chris Jenkins Jr. If we could get a second rounder, that'd be awesome. Uh, it'd be cool for the Jets story. You know, we we heard about the uh, Ruckert story, Bill, Jeremy, that whole thing, his father, and the whole Jets like Jets. That'd be cool. But Chris Jenkins Jr. coming, following his father's footsteps. Oh, that'd be cool. Come on, that'd be awesome. That would be really cool. Good morning. All right, good morning, everybody. Bowers boy, those are the nicknames for the Bowers guys. I like Bowers, so I guess you could call me a Bowers boy uh, if you want. My my number one is trading up for Marvin Harrison Jr., but, uh, you know, I, I'm willing to wiggle. Um, okay, Phil. Paula Fuaga and Fashano are there. Who are you picking? If it's between these two, I'm picking Fashano. I want the pure left tackle. Fuaga, from what I hear, there are a lot of criticisms whether he could jump to the left side. So I value left tackles more. I'd go Fashano. And I think he's the better player. But in general, the left tackle thing is really important to me. So if those were my only two options on the board, uh, I would go with Fashano. But good question, Phil. Um. Let's go to Johnny. With uh, Tyler Boyd still on the table again, would the Jets make a swing at him? He's still super young and pretty healthy. I just read a report this morning that uh, Pittsburgh gave him a low ball off- offer that uh, kind of disrespected him. They offered him a two-year deal for 10 mil, 5 million average. I don't know the guarantees or any of that. I just saw it in a story. Uh, boy. Um, the more, and it's the same thing for the safety market, the more that uh, you know people hang out there on the open market in, in uh, free agency land, Obviously, the chances increase of that price going down and maybe the Jets doing it. I'd probably leave the door open. We'll talk about it tomorrow uh, with a young wide receiver the Jets are meeting with. But um, I'd prefer leaving the door open for the draft. But Boyd, obviously, is a really good player. So if you just want to go Boyd and then uh, in the draft go offensive line, okay, there is a compelling case. Depends how much money he wants. But, yeah, Tyler Boyd's a really good player with a high floor. Plug him in. Sure. Uh, let's go to Taylor here on YouTube. Is there any way to trade back far enough to use that second in, in change to get back up and get another pick in the first? I want an offensive lineman and a wide receiver in the first. Absolutely, it's possible. I think we talked about it yesterday, but if you trade back to like 17, 18, you get a second, which is hovering around the 50th overall pick. And then you use the 50th overall pick in your third round, or you can get to, I think we talked about it yesterday, 29th, uh, which is Detroit. So yeah, there is a path to... Beep, boop, bop, move all over the board and get back into the first and have a pair of firsts. That's true. My only question is, who wh- who are you hitting first? I would imagine probably offensive line first, and then you're losing the receiver, or you're getting the receiver and getting the offensive line. So we have to play the math of who you're getting and how you're getting them. But yeah, sure, it's definitely possible, Taylor. Definitely possible. Is uh, Okay. <laughs> 
NY Jets FL. Tell Hackett, offensive coordinating is not reading high like hieroglyphics, even though it has certainly seemed that way. Uh, Phil says, Paul, I'm not a tattoo guy, but if they win the Super Bowl, I may just get one. I got two. I got one on my uh, like uh, inside forearm here. It's a, it's a Pikachu with a backwards, basically, Jets hat. And then I got my family crest, a New Orleans, uh, Florida Lee, uh, on my left uh, upper bicep, um, uh, left shoulder area. So I love tattoos. If I had more money, I'd have more tattoos. Uh, yeah, I'm a big tattoo guy. My dad's got a bunch of tattoos. My fiance has a bunch of tattoos. So I'm a tattoo freak. I love tattoos. I love the pain of tattoos. I'm a freak. Yeah, it's very nice. Bucket list things I can control. Oh, that's an interesting way to put it, Ricky. You have bucket list items that you can control. You met your all-time favorite player, Curtis Martin, had a really good conversation with him. Yeah, I've never met Curtis. I, I, we may have been at the same place at the same time before, but I don't think we I, – I would remember, obviously, if I met Curtis Martin. I think we may have been like if I'm at a Jets game and I know he's up in a booth, but I didn't go see him. Uh, so that may have happened. Um. Okay, and yeah, there's other trade ideas for a wide receiver. Oh, look at 19 New York Jets 69. That's funny, boy. Green. I played middle linebacker at five foot six in high school. So there you go. Yeah, I had to do it from an injury situation. My main positions where I played running back, I played cornerback, and I was a return man. Those were my main positions of choice. But I played whatever they needed, which occasionally was middle linebacker. Uh, was I a pass rusher or something? Because I know what we we used to have some star offensive linemen. I remember getting put on my ass. And why the hell would they have put me at defensive end? So I can't remember that story. But I remember getting put on my ass by one of the offensive tackles. I don't know what other reason that would have been. I don't think it was on the second level of the defense either. So, yeah, my, my brain molecules are disintegrating over time. Um. Okay, Phil keeps presenting these. These are fun. Ten, Fashano or Bowers, Paul? I'm taking I'm taking Bowers. I'm taking Bowers. If it was Alt, I'd take Alt. But, again, I, I've mentioned my top five before. Big three receivers, Joe Alt, Bowers. That's my top five. That's my top five big board heading in. Yeah. Yeah, that would be it. Uh, right. Let's see. 19 New Year's at 69 says, with all the additions at free and said, go wide receiver then online unless alt drops to us, which by the way is possible. I was reading a Zach Rosenblatt piece this morning. You start doing the math, it's possible. Possible. Uh, Frank on the Heavy on Jets Facebook page. Shout out to Heavy on Jets, our overlords that help support the show. Uh, Frank says, move up to get alt. Okay, I'm all for that. Move up and get Marvin Harrison Jr. Okay, I'm for that. Stay at 10 and pick Bowers. Assumes none of those top five are there. Ford trade back, pick up a second. Yeah, that's uh, Frank. Send that into Joe Douglas. I like that plan. Um, yeah, that plan sounds great. If they move it for all, awesome. Move up from Marvin Harrison Jr., sure. Stay at 10, pick Bowers, phenomenal. Trade back and pick up a second, and there's really no way they could go wrong. So, Frank, that's a beautiful plan, man. Mona Lisa. Cinema. Mwah. Chef's kiss. Spectacular. Spectacular. 19 New York Jet 69. So, Boyger, when are you getting married to your lucky fiance? Great question. Uh, well, we were supposed to get married. I uh, proposed to her. I used her favorite TV show, which is Riverdale, which was a CW show. I I, uh, I knew a producer or uh, not a producer, like a guy who covers Riverdale and like entertainment stuff. He went to a red carpet event and he got all these uh, actors and actresses uh, from this show to like he interviewed them about this wedding scene that was coming up on Riverdale, which by the way, there actually was a wedding scene coming up on Riverdale, which was funny, but he mocked it like he was doing an interview about that wedding scene, but he was talking about me engaging my fiance. So we got the, I worked out this whole thing. I wanted to go, I want to go to the nth degree. And then at the end of each of these little interview, but you guys can see it on my Twitter. It is my pin tweet is about our baby announcement from uh, whatever the date ended up being. Uh, I did a baby, a funny Jets baby announcement. And then if you go down, I think it's on the thread. I think the next tweet shows the other viral tweet that I had, which was Riverdale being using that to uh, propose to my fiance. And at the end of each of these like little bites of them, like faking doing this interview, they go, Paul, get on a knee and do it, man. Like go propose to her. And it's just, oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So uh, that guy, shout out to comicbook.com. 
and uh, my my good friend Russ uh, for helping me do that and pulling that off. But anywho, long story short, I asked her to marry me, which turns a girlfriend into a fiance. And then COVID happened, a world pandemic, which kind of canceled all of our plans. There weren't no matter where I was or where I went to, there was no allowed gatherings of insert amount of people. So then it kind of got lost. And then I had a daughter and then now it's kind of all over the place. So I have no idea when the hell I'm marrying my fiance, to be honest with you. It's now kind of got lost in the shuffle, which is kind of crazy. But we love each other. We love being with each other. So uh, hopefully one day we do get to literally put the put the I mean, she has a ring. I bought her a ring, but like to officially put the ring on it. I don't know when the heck that's going to happen. That's a good question. And my random story of how I proposed to my fiance. Um, dream first is fought now and leg it. That is uh, Taylor. I'll be honest. That's a unique dream, but I appreciate it. I like difference. I'm I'm uh, I like uh, people that have different takes. Sweeney or Margot Robbie? Oh, that's good. I'm going Margot Robbie. I'm going Margot Robbie. Yeah, but you know, you could go different strokes, different folks. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't know much of Sweeney, and then I saw her on Hot Ones, like not Hot Ones, like she's hot, I, I, more the uh, Wing Show. Uh, so I didn't really know much of her, but uh, I've known Margot Robbie a while. Reese can get to 2,000 yards on the ground. That's totally possible. That's totally possible. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, yeah. Give me Margo. It seems like uh, the rest of us agree. All Margo. There you are. Um, and you like that top five. Okay, beautiful. Tomorrow on the show, by the way, we're going to be talking some Jets draft. We'll be talking some Jets draft. I'm reaching out to a couple of draft analysts. We'll get them on. Dom C's back on Monday. So we're going to have some fun shows. So I love it, guys. Feel free. Questions are always welcome on the show. It could go personal. It could be Jets. It could be whatever. We're an open book here on this program. But make sure no matter what, you guys always contribute in the free way that everyone can by liking the video and hitting subscribe down below. That helps spread the good word, the gospel of New York Jets here on the program. you got 400 plus people on Twitter, 100 plus people on YouTube. Again, make sure you guys are liking the video, hitting subscribe down below. We're live every single day at 730 in the morning. We appreciate you. Plus, we're live additionally every Tuesday and Thursday at 3 o'clock. We've got a Jets mock draft coming up on Thursday, a dueling mock draft with my mock draft and Woody's mock draft. And then it's a three-round mock, and then you guys will decide who had the better mock. Who would you prefer that to happen? Make sure you guys uh, let us know there. And uh, last one, as I see from Frank here before we sign off, it is enjoy your daughter while she's young. Mine's graduating from college next month. The time flies by. Um, uh, yeah, she's two. She uh, just turned two in January. And I'm just trying to hold on for dear life. Now, an unfortunate thing. Uh, well, it is what it is. It's like we all have to work. I'm taking on a lot of extra work for the next, let's see, April, May, June, July, August, September. So like for the next six-ish months. The whole work week, I'm going to be gone from like, uh, you know, basically after the show's over till 11 o'clock at night, most days doing extra work at the radio station to bring more money home for the family. Uh, more a TMI information you guys need to know. So I'm going to be missing the day to day operations for most of the work week. So I want to really savor uh, every moment uh, that comes, Frank. But that's good advice. And uh, college. Oh, my goodness gracious. Uh, I will try to avoid thinking about college uh, for a while as well. And Ricky, I see your question. Uh, Paul, when did the Jets players put their rings on? It's coming. Uh, well, technically, I think it comes during the summer after the Super Bowl. I think there's like a ring ceremony. I wouldn't know since uh, I haven't been alive to see any of those. But the Jets will be putting it on next year. I fully believe the Jets are going to win the Super Bowl. I believe it in my in my loins, in my bones. The Jets are winning the chip, and I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait for it. And we will celebrate it together on this amazing journey of Boy Green Daily and New York Jets content creation here on YouTube.com slash Boy Green 25. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I love you guys. We're family here. La familia. Ohana. And uh, we'll always have that. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 730. Take care, everybody.